बाजे मुरली मन बाबरा बाजे मुरली मन बाबरा चलो हाओ प्यारे देखे कन्हैया चलो आओ प्यारे देखे कन्हैया बाजे मुरली मन बाबरा बन बीच शोभे रस राग खेले बन बीच शोभे रस राग खेले मम जीव संगी सख सावरा मम जीव संगी सख सावरा बाजे मुरली मन बाबरा बाजे मुरली मन बाबरा चलो प्यारे दे बाजे मुरली मन बाबरा चलो आओ प्यारे देखे कन्हैया बाजे मुरली बाजे मुरली बाजे मुरली ഹിന്ദുസ്ഥാനി ക്ലാസിക്കൽ മ്യൂസിക്കിൽ ഇന്ന് നിലവിലുള്ള പ്രഗത്ഭരായിട്ടുള്ള മ്യൂസീഷ്യൻസിൽ ഒരു യങ് മ്യൂസീഷ്യൻ ആണ് ഓംകാർ നാഥ് ഹൗൽദാർ സാർ എൻ്റെ ഗുരുവും കൂടിയാണ് അത് സാറിൻ്റെ കൂടെ ഇന്നിപ്പം എനിക്കിങ്ങനെ ഇരുന്ന് സംസാരിക്കാൻ പറ്റിയതിൽ വളരെയധികം സന്തോഷമുണ്ട് താങ്ക് യു ഫോർ കമ്മിങ് സാർ ഇറ്റ്സ് സച്ച് എൻ ഓണർ ടു സ്പീക്ക് വിത്ത് യു താങ്ക് യു സോ മച്ച് ഫോർ ഹാവിങ് മീ മഴ ആൻഡ് താങ്ക് യു ട്രു കോപ്പി തിങ് ഫോർ ഇൻവൈറ്റിംഗ് മീ യു ദിസ് ഇസ് ജസ്റ്റ് ലൈക്ക് ഐ plan something like we always have uh, you know conversations from your home just like that just some doubts that i have regarding this art form one of the uh, first things that i want to ask that i am a student of hindustani music and uh, having known the difficulties in learning practicing and also performing i have always been in awe of the great musicians like you and i know that the seamless renditions that you perform on stage it won't happen overnight i want to know what was your journey of becoming a great musician that is you are now and 
what was the struggles of course in, in taleem in riyas and all and in performance also well mara first of all uh, thank you so much for your kind words but uh, let me make it very clear to you that i am also a student of music i am not any great musician uh, we are always learning and so one is always a student in this field it's a great art form learning never ends in fact learning always begins so uh, so with that respect i am just a student of music so somewhere it is beautifully said that uh, it takes two to three decades of lot of hard work dedication passion for an overnight success it takes two to three decades of hard work and passion and commitment for an overnight success it looks like an overnight success success but it is not so Uh, so one has to put in the hours of uh, effort practice and in this field as they call it guru mukha vidya you have to go to a teacher learn from him her be with him her observe what they do imbibe their practices and see what we can incorporate those practices into our music so being with the teacher constantly always helps and with what we get from them we have to come take it inside us practice and see what we can assimilate with our strengths and our weaknesses we may not be able to sing all the things that our gurus give us there are certain things which we may not be able to do so but there are certain things which may be able to do apart from learning from them so we have to think about it practice them and one has to be really patient in this art form in hindustani classical music or carnatic classical music or i let me put it as bharatiya shastriya sangeetam one has to be really patient our music is process oriented it is never product oriented it is it is the journey that matters most and in the journey you keep traveling and traveling and you will never know when you want when you would have crossed the destination that you had in mind in the first place in fact when you arrive in the destination that you wanted to it may feel very small mm-hmm. so this way it is a journey it's an endless journey learning practicing performing we learn as much as in the classroom on stage on stage it's a different kind of learning interacting with different musicians the conditions are different the time limit given to you is different so one is always a student and he or she can and should and will learn in different circumstances so to become a performer i think uh, in my opinion at, le- at least it has taken me a good couple of decades to learn practice whatever our gurus has given us and then to make it your own to perform it takes so much time and it is uh, it is important that one spends that much time without any hurry to perform i think that will be very good for any student of music so you you have been very fortunate to <coughs> learn from uh, many doyans of hindustani classical music uh, sarnde uh, sarnde father uh, pandit dr nagraj rao havaldar uh, sir oru munpandil nikkuna indiyil ippo munpandil nilkuna oru hindustani classical vocalist aanu and sir mattu pala പ്രശസ്തരായിട്ടുള്ള മ്യൂസീഷ്യൻസിൻ്റെ അടുത്തൊന്നും പഠിക്കാൻ ഭാഗ്യം കിട്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരാളാണ് ഭാരത് രത്ന പണ്ഡിറ്റ് ഭീംസൻ ജോഷിജിയുടെ ശിഷ്യനായിട്ടുള്ള പണ്ഡിറ്റ് മാധവ് ഗുരുജി അഫ് കിരാന ഖരാന പണ്ഡിറ്റ് പഞ്ചാക്ഷരി സ്വാമി മത്തികട്ടി അഫ് അട്രോളി ജയ്പൂർ ഖരാന ആൻഡ് കറൻ്റ്ലി ഹി ഈസ് ലേണിംഗ് ഫ്രം പണ്ഡിറ്റ് ഇന്ദുധർ നിരോഡി ഓഫ് ആഗ്ര ആൻഡ് ഗോളിയർ ഖരാന കിരാന ഖരാനയുടെയും ജയ്പൂർ ഖരാനയുടെയും ആഗ്ര ഖരാനയുടെയും മൂന്ന് ഖരാനകളുടെയും എലമെൻസ് സാറിൻ്റെ റെൻഡീഷൻസിൽ നമുക്ക് കാണാൻ സാധിക്കും uh so could you please explain the important characteristics of hindustani classical music i know it is a very broad question but could you please uh, point out a few uh, as you mentioned about my gurus i am very fortunate to learn from all of them um <clears throat> when i went to pandit indudhar nirodi guruji i had initially learned and trained under three other gurus my father dr nagraj avaldar pandit madhagudi guruji and pandit matikatti guruji for almost 18 years before i went to pandit indudhar nirodi guruji after i went to nirodi guruji he started teaching rag bhairav 
for almost two and a half years. So the first two and a half years was only he was teaching me Rag Bhairav, trying to explain the nuances of the Raga, nuances of the Gharana, different styles of singing. So which means that even after learning for 18 years, one can always still spend so much time in learning one Raga. So Hindustani music has so much to offer. Before that, my other Guruji, Pandit Madhav Gudi Guruji, he taught me Rag Puriya for seven years. So you can just imagine. Huh? Mati Gatti Guruji taught me Jaipur Gharanas for more than eight years. My father continues to teach me the nuances of uh, the Ragas every single day. So the depth of this subject is very, very vast. So while we say the depths and talk about specialities, Bharatiya Shastri Sangeetam, which has the main two facets, Carnatic music and Hindustani music. In Carnatic music, they call as Manodharma Sangeetam. In Hindustani music, we call it uh, improvisation. So spontaneity and the creativity which has to come while you are performing on stage then and there, that is one of the key elements of Hindustani music. So in a way, our system trains us to be creative. So what are the methods to be creative? So this, for you, for you to know, you have to go to a teacher, spend a lot of time. The teacher will unravel all the nuances and all the layers of how to be creative, with what elements you can get creative with. So for example, in Hindustani music, we sing khayal music. Khayal means imagination. Imagination of what? Imagination of raga, tala, composition, of whom? the performer. So this is the imagination of the person who is singing with whatever training him or her, he or she has had from their gurus. And with all this background and effort and training, we go there and try to create with this experience. So this creative aspect is one of the fundamental core strengths of our Hindustani classical music. Just like what you said, uh the element of spontaneity. Yeah. The state of not not knowing what is going to happen yeah. next or what he or she is going to perform at the very next moment. Yes. That is I think very exciting and yet challenging. Yes. And I wish to know your uh, personal experience as and or your experiences on stage and mm. how have you equipped yourself with such a musical knowledge that to create something that much spontaneous yeah. and your journey of you know evolving into a musician that you are now. Again, I am too small a student, I am just beginning to learn. Uh, but one should say that you know, uh, to be able to sing creatively at least a good 15 to 20 years of uh, training from uh, learning and training under a guru is important, it's very important. And years of practice, so for example, I have been very fortunate to be practicing Rag Bhairav for almost 25 to 30 years now. So every single day when you practice that Raga, it will, it will be new to you, mm. right? So, uh, so the more you explore, the more you will find. And it is just like life. Every day, uh, Rag Bhairav will be new. Of course, the, the grammar will remain the same, the Swaras present in Rag Bhairav will remain the same. But the way you can see Rag Bhairav every single day is just like the way you see life every single day. It is new and fresh. Of course, it is exciting. But to, to be able to create something spontaneously, one must have spent a good uh, <laughs> couple of decades to equip themselves with a lot of practice, chintan, thinking about how, how we can do it and listening to your gurus. I think that's very, very important. Uh, listening to gurus, listening to the class recordings and practicing and listening to your own practice see where you are where you can improve what is coming out well i think i think these are the key elements to uh, to be able to sing creatively and to create something spontaneously uh, one of the important characteristics i think in hindustani classical music is practice riyas hmm. and not just hindustani classical music for any music that for that matter hmm. but uh, i have heard so many strange stories about you know, great musicians putting themselves through a lot of struggle just to mm -hmm. practice yeah. and they had so many you know uh, 
in the present time it will sound very weird to us hmm. you know they will sit uh, in in very any uh, you know harsh uh, you know spaces and uh, they will put themselves through a lot of you know torture hmm. just to practice hmm. so what is your thought about or what was your process of riyas yeah i think it uh, the practice sessions and the way one practices is very very subjective and personal hmm. so <clears throat> depending on one's voice depending on one's temperament the practice will change but the the ragas don't change the way we practice the ragas that will change yeah. yes i have also heard lot of stories about uh, yesteryear musicians uh, doing uh, tapas mm. or many hardcore penance to practice and put themselves through rigorous uh, sessions to master their art and craft so one famous thing that uh, we come across is something known as chilla chilla is a process where one musician or any student of music has to practice when your eyes are open if you are playing tabla or singing mm. or vocalist or sitarist anything mm. if your eyes are open your hands must be on tabla sitar or you must be singing mm. you can only respond to nature calls like eating or to refresh so these are there are many many processes one can go through and do rigorous practice but i feel uh, in today's age and time of course it is important to spend time the more this more you spend time the better you get at it but also understanding what you need to practice i think that's very very important mm. uh, and comparing ourselves to somebody else you know somebody might might have practiced for 18 hours or 22 hours a day their time and age was different today's time and age is different so what is needed for my voice what is needed for me to improve is it the rag that i need to improve is it my voice training that i have to improve is it the composition that i have to get better if one has to if one can practice with this sense i think that is quite sufficient and uh, the more you are in it the better it, you you can get at it so if one is spending good quality 10 to 12 hours a day versus one person spending 1 hour of quality time obviously the person who is spending more time will benefit out of the practice and uh, i i think yester year musicians have done all these things because their social life was different mm. nobody ever had any whatsapp which takes which takes a lot of time in our lives today but i think they were able to dedicate more time because the, i think their life were much simpler then what it is now i think we have more things on our hands than what we are what we can handle sometimes so i think with with respect to time uh, i think they were able to do more but even now if somebody wants to decide to spend time time is 24 hours for everybody I, they can spend lot of time uh, nobody can stop them uh, so we spoke about the spontaneity of the art form but it is also very much dynamic hmm. Uh, even though it is a traditional art form which still follows the very strict regime of paramparic mm. system uh, the socio cultural changes have mm. always affected the structure of this art form mm. uh, do you think hindustani music has gone through any kind of reshaping or remodeling at any level be it in taleem performance or even the creation of aesthetics yeah see uh, change is the only constant thing that we can expect in life in general and in every art form and it is true of hindustani music also uh while i have we have been discussing about spontaneity and creativity we must also understand that raga is an established form taala is an established form they don't change the way we explore in the raga is the creative aspect for example in a ra- for example rag yaman if you sing a composition that composition is already set it is already composed and it is set to a particular tune that is already set it is set to a particular taal taal is already set so these are the given elements which are already pre composed for you but taking that created material we get creative with it so this is the fundamental uh, spontaneous or creative element that we have been discussing about um see if you go back to the olden days uh, our musicians used to perform in temples and it was patronized in royal courts mm. where they sang overnight every musician got a chance 
to sing overnight all by himself or herself there was only there used to be one artist throughout the night now if there is a 3 hour hindustani or any music concert there are at least two to three artists one artist getting one one hour piece because uh, the time factor is also there so the the way we look at things have changed and every musician who used to get 3 hours uh, now who gets 1 hour he or she wants to show their showcase their art and talent in that 1 hour so obviously there will be more elements mm-hmm. in one in 1 hour compared to 3 hours mm-hmm. so this way all the way we express it changes hence the aesthetics coming out of the expression also changes mm-hmm. and this is the dynamic art form because of the way the life has changed the time duration have changed so these things are the natural outcome of the changes that has happened socially for us sir i have been part of i have been blessed to be a part of your music production named one khayal many voices where six vocalists uh, sang one khayal one paramparik composition uh, in vilambit vilambit laya uh, i think it's for the first time that uh, a khayal is being sung in a group format and you have also put forward so many innovative ideas uh, and innovations into this art form could you please speak uh, much about your ventures and contributions uh, uh as uh, as a student of music uh, we know that uh, it is mainly solo singing which is considered to be the highest and toughest in, in hindustani music and two people singing together we call it jugalbandi mm. and very seldom we see uh, a khayal being performed in a group of course uh, there are you, there is one main vocalist and there can be chorus by a set of musicians who can support the main vocalist mm-hmm. but a khayal sung in a group uh, it was very fascinating for me and i i really wanted to explore that idea and i am very fortunate that i got wonderful uh, kids like you to uh, make that happen <clears throat> uh this could work because uh, all of you were learning from one teacher all of you had learned the track for x number of years you knew the composition <clears throat> we had practiced together and we know how we develop the khayal how to improvise we all had some similar ideas or the p- performers had similar ideas because you were learning from me so that became the connecting point for me so that i can if i can tell you one phrase i can tell the next person to continue the same thought <clears throat> if there are four phrases in a line i could divide it into four people and the thought would continue in different voices mm-hmm. so this is this was my approach to create that thing and uh, well whatever came out is there admit and also the uh, identity of each singer in yeah. that group that remained throughout yes so did it uh, did it contribute to the whole absolutely project? absolutely because every voice has its own uniqueness every voice is special every voice is a strength according to me so uh, any particular phrase the same phrase in two different voices will sound mm-hmm. unique and beautiful mm-hmm. so uh, uh, if i am singing one line of four phrases my voice will sound the same but four voices can bring out more uniqueness mm-hmm. in the same same line for me so that's the way i looked at it yes. yeah def- for you to answer yeah um, it definitely contributed to the uh, to what i was thinking sir could you please uh, speak a bit about your another production named kamala nayana uh well kamala nayana is a composition a devotional composition of one of the haridasas in karnataka composed by my father dr nagraj holdar it was it is set to rag gora kalyan i have always been fascinated with the harmonies that we listen to in western music so i thought why can't we explore that in the devotional composition format and uh, if at all we did how should we able to do it? how how can i do it mm-hmm. so that was the exciting part and uh, Gora Kalyan is a very very beautiful raga which uh, which in my opinion it uh, I thought I could I could explore harmonies in harmonies in it while keeping the uh, structure of the raga grammar of the raga intact 
if i if i could explore the harmonies mm -hmm. so that was an exciting part for me so that's why i went ahead with that project can we apply the same method to other ragas uh well you can but uh, since it was a devotional composition i went ahead and explored those uh, possibilities mm -hmm. but in khayal uh, it is a solo line singing it is just mm -hmm. one voice mm -hmm. so i don't know how that can work in khayal but definitely in a devotional format while keeping the rag grammar intact mm. if that can happen i think that is a way to explore so devotional that comes into the semi classical genre uh, well some people do term it as that way but uh, if the rag is intact i don't know why we should call it semi classical music according in my opinion and so uh, tanpura is a instrument that is very personal to a musician yes. and it is like a companion yes. throughout their journey yes. and we will become one with the tanpura at one point of time yes and i'm someone who who has been truly amazed by your novel ideas every time and especially the special tanpura that you have designed could you explain a little more about the instruments that you have designed well i have been very fortunate to um grow up in a musician's family to see tanpura at a very young age so <clears throat> most of my friends they were playing with toys and i was very fortunate to be with tanpuras in my early age so that always fascinated me and if one has seen a traditional tanpura it has four wooden pegs which is called kunthis to tune the strings which is in my opinion difficult because you need years of training to be able to handle the wooden pegs and which is very very tight which which needs both frequency the shruti in the ear and also good control in your muscles to be able to tune the string properly i thought <clears throat> that it's a very very difficult aspect for a small child to do i was thinking if what if a 3 a 4 year old or a 5 year old had to tune the tanpura can we make this easy uh so uh the the tanpura that i have designed in the past people have put the guitar uh, tuning keys for the tanpura to tune it easily i am not the first person to do it but uh, that fascinated me because that becomes very easy to tune mm -hmm. and any small children also can explore the way the tanpura can be tuned but uh, i that was the idea to make the tuning easier and also to maybe reach younger children at a very small age so they can start tuning the tanpura mm -hmm. so that was the thought behind this and then i put uh, the keys and eliminated the wooden pegs so that became popular mm -hmm. and uh, some uh, some musician uh, said told me that uh, no this is this is okay tuning is easy but everything but it doesn't look like the traditional tanpura mm -hmm. it it does not have the same feel mm. but one musician pointed out saying that uh, of course it is easy to tune but it doesn't look that traditional so then uh, i got to thinking again i thought i will retain the wooden pegs and also incorporate the uh, keys mm -hmm. so that from a distance it looks like a traditional mm -hmm. tanpura all the traditional traditional elements are there but you also have the tuning keys to tune it easily mm -hmm. so that was the idea behind uh, that design and uh, everybody accepted it and uh, i'm glad even small ch children are able to uh, tune the tanpura that was my intention from the beginning so your swarmandal yeah so, swarmandal also the same thing as you know uh, mara uh, swarmandal is a western instrument called an autochromatic harp mm -hmm. so one of the se uh, uh, senior musicians in india brought it to indian music and named it as swarmandal and from then it has been popularly referred to as that as swarmandal so th those also have to be tuned by a spanner mm -hmm. if you have seen mm -hmm. that so again the same thought what if a 5 year old or 4 year old has to tune a swarmandal so again the same idea i incorporated to put the guitar tuning uh, keys to the swarmandal but in doing so the number of strings uh, got lessened Mm. Uh, the uh, the root instrument has 36 strings 12 in an octave into 3 so 36 so we brought it down to 18 strings mm. and hence the design speaking of innovations yeah. in this ultra modern super techy world yeah. which is exposed to rapid changes every single minute yeah 
this traditional art form as you know the traditional art forms in general always appear to be very rigid and but our conversations thus far have been about the changes hmm. that that are happening in this very art, art form what are the technological interventions uh, that have happened in mu- hindustani music and i want to know about the possibilities and also the pitfalls of this phenomenon especially when in a time when social media predominates see uh, technology is an integral part of our lives all walks of life see for you to go in an auditorium which has a thousand capacity if you are sitting in the last seat unless there is a microphone how can you hear so it is according to me technology is a very very quintessential part of all walks of life <clears throat> of course it is not the fault of technology it is the fault of the person who uses it wrongly how how is it if, uh, how is how is technology responsible for any negative consequence i would i don't believe in that um uh, for example <clears throat> due to portability electronic tanpuras came in came into existence but uh, some people say just because the electronic tanpuras came people stopped using the conventional tanpuras is it the fault of the technology no it is the fault of the people who stopped using it we can always be very careful we can adapt to new technologies while keeping the traditional values strong and long so it is in our hands to keep all the traditional values and practices intact while we incorporate the technology into our system for example now there are there are tanpuras on phones nowadays mm-hmm. there are tanpura applications tabla tabla applications uh, so it is so easy for anybody to practice wherever they are just go back by 50 years when you had to have the tanpura you had to have the tabla and the tabla player for you to practice now today's day day age and time it is very difficult to find a tabla player for you to practice you can just click the button on the phone and practice so that's a great advantage any any children uh, for any student of music so i look at it i look at technology as an absolute uh, advantage for uh, <clears throat> for students of music like me because even documentation of music happens very very well through technology mm. you can go to the class record the class come back home listen to it 25 times extract all the material out of it gain out of it and again you can go back to the same recording after 10 years that will give you a different dimension so i think technology has uh, contributed very much to our music social media of course uh, another uh, great platform for uh, musicians like me who can express our ideas uh, our <clears throat> our effort there and it will reach uh, far wide and across the world Uh, earlier if you had to listen you had to go to the concert hall but now thanks to youtube and many other social medias you can just click a button and listen to the favorite musician your favorite raga by the favorite musician i think it's a great advantage to everybody both the musician and the student and the audience as we have discussed in the past uh, there is a drastic change uh, in the method of teaching uh before and after the pandemic and this music system uh, which has its roots in gharana system which in fact was very very much secretive and concealed in the past and i have heard many stories that in the older period uh, compositions from one gharana never went outside and they uh, belong to that gharana alone as a private pro- possession yeah. and even though it's not that secretive now uh learning music directly from a guru uh has always been an very integral part of internalizing not only the music but also the music culture but the pandemic of course eliminated all the possibilities for human contact yeah. and still we adapted to that worse situation yeah and uh being a teacher uh, uh what what are the changes in the teaching method that you have adapted when the process of talim became online and how did those adaptive methods open up a new world of possibilities yes uh it's a very very long question maria <laughs> so i will try to answer every point that you have covered in it um <clears throat> so gharanas having their own compositions which never went to the students of other gharanas of course 
you just we asked me about the social media so thanks yeah. to social media you can document compositions and the uh, the other garana students can listen to the other garana compositions hence there is a chance for us to know about it and probably learn learn them also <clears throat> so i think uh, technology has played an important role in uh, decentralization of uh, many things and it, it is available for everybody and all and i feel it's good i think uh, we should all learn new things and we should we should try to learn as much as possible what's wrong in it and uh, <clears throat> music has always been guru mukha vidya so you have to go to the teacher to learn of course that is the right way to, that is the way to do there is no other way we you spoke about uh, covid and how it eliminated human contact and everything became online mm -hmm. so that was a new way of life which which is now prevalent mm -hmm. even after covid covid is subsiding people have adapted to the the changes uh, which happened because of covid mm -hmm. so i look at it this way when option a is not available you have to make the best of option b of course there is no human contact what will you do about it now you will not stop learning right so you will you will find the next best way to do it and the online learn, learning was the next be, best thing to do see nowadays through skype or any zoom or google meet or whatever platform of online interaction you can still learn when you are in two different places like calicut and bangalore bangalore and california minus technology this learning also would not have happened so of course there is no a but there is b and you can this option b is doing good to you why not explore it and once you develop a relationship with the teacher and the student and once the teacher knows the strengths of the student he or she can always explore to make it better so online uh, teaching has also uh, given birth to new ideas and the way we interact with the student see for example uh, <clears throat> in an online class there is maybe half or one second delay so we can we cannot sing together uh, we cannot sing together because there is that one sec one second delay so what is the new idea so you sing with the taal you show you demonstrate you stop the taala you ask the student to start the taala and then sing so these are some of the new uh, techniques that one has to adopt and adapt to and then move forward so i feel it's a great learning experience for everybody even for the teachers uh so i'm i'm very fortunate that i i was in this covid era so i got to learn these these new techniques uh, when i came to your class for the first time uh you never asked me to you know note down every uh, uh, swaras that you sing yeah. you just started singing and we uh, we started uh, you know uh, uh, singing uh, what you just sang yeah. and when it became online we started scripting everything yes and i have every single note from the first online class yes. till till date yes. and i think uh, that gives more opportunity for me also to yeah. you know go back to the script and yes. then yes. practice once again Correct. and other than forgetting what i learned in the previous class Absolutely. now i have the material with me yeah. so my possibilities as a student has also increased absolutely i think uh, there is a huge positive out of this uh, development that happened in the covid era which which uh, through challenges to both the student and the teacher and the teacher had to think on their feet to come up with mm -hmm. new ideas to be able to communicate better mm -hmm. or at least get as close to an in person class mm -hmm. and then adapt to the situation yeah i think there are a lot of positives there so i'm happy something good came out of covid uh well uh, well we should uh, it, it was a very unfortunate thing we <laughs> lost lives across the world but uh, uh that's that's nature but one has to always learn from everything of all the art forms in india uh, classical arts have remained less popular or <coughs> less populist the lack of technical or musical knowledge may be one of the reasons uh, but art forms like hindustani classical music which has got great scope to even to deliver the very intricate and complicated microscopic human emotions hmm. it is not communicating that much to the wider audience language being a prime cause for this barrier how do you perceive the need for linguistic inclusivity in hmm. hindustani classical music yeah again this is a very very beautiful but long and has many elements in this question mana so i'll try to 
answer all of it language barrier oh you the first thing was why is it not that popular see i think uh, exposure to uh, music is a very important thing so let me ask you a question i know you have been asking me a lot of questions so i'll i'll ask you a question do you know who roger federer is yeah who is he i've heard of him correct so yeah. you have heard of him yeah. he's a, one of the greatest tennis players, tennis players. to play the game yeah. right do you know sachin tendulkar yeah yeah but uh, why do you know him do you play cricket no do you play tennis no. but you still know about them why because yeah, you have seen them on television yeah so you had the exposure to cricket and tennis through television even though you don't practice it hence you know about them so if if there is a dedicated channel for classical music which is played continuously on television for 24/7 like any every other news channels nowadays that we have any child would scanning the channels uh, may look at the channel and then listen to good music so i think uh, that good exposure at a early age or any age for that matter is a very very crucial factor and one propaganda or one stigma for classical music is that you know there's i don't know why people believe it's for the elite or it is practiced by the old people we have these things uh, stigmas about our music it is not true at all there are so many young children who are perf- taken up classical music and learning them with lot of passion so i think exposure uh, is very very important and we must make sure that there are enough platforms for the public to access classical music i think that's very very important and what is the second part of your question if you can please uh, the language barrier language barrier see hindustani music was practiced in the northern part of uh, india hence the languages used in the composition were uh, were the languages which prevailed in the northern part of india for example hindustani uh, or uh, braj bhasha hindi urdu so these were some, uh, rajasthani these were some of the languages which were spoken in those areas those uh, language uh, people wrote compositions in that language and that came into the music but in hindustani music there are there are no restrictions or rules uh, which says that only these languages have to be sung any language can be sung so uh, my father guru has uh, made lot of efforts to sing kannada compositions as khayals and even before him also many people have tried this uh, approach and they have tried to incorporate the regional languages in hindustani music i think this is a, there are lot of efforts has been made so that way we uh we can reach the regional audiences mm. so for example uh, uh so a north indian person will listen to hindustani music because the compositions are in north indian languages if you come down to south if you put uh, tamil malayalam telugu kannada in classical music that person who may not listen to classical music will listen to the song through the lyric and in turn get exposed to hindustani music mm-hmm. i think language in this regard will play uh, uh, an important aspect to draw audiences uh, who appreciate lyric mm-hmm. and then eventually get into music i think uh, i think these efforts have been made in the past and i i feel it's very interesting and wonderful in all the concerts uh, you and uh, guruji nagraj sir uh, <coughs> have done in, in all of the concerts that uh, you did in kerala you tried to incorporate one or two malayalam compositions yes and uh, i wish to hear more about your malayalam composition especially my personal favorite odivil nyan atyagunu <laughs> well uh, let me put it this way maya i have been very very fortunate to learn a uh, few malayalam compositions and i have thoroughly enjoyed the compositions at a lyrical level and also the musical level so as you know uh, how your favorite song and uh, how beautifully you sing that so um oduvil nan uttayagunu by uh, sachidanandan ji uh, you know how it happened i would like to uh, share this personal experience with all the viewers that uh, maya and her parents uh, shibu ji and uh, hasina ma'am they were at my residence in bangalore and they were explaining the beautiful lyric oduvil nan so while they were while your parents were um explaining me the meaning that resonated the the meaning and emotion of the song 
resonated with the raga that i have learned in the past so all the emotions that lyric was giving me that was connecting with rag jog for me the same emotions that i could relate to musically so this is another approach for the artist a lyric can evoke a certain emotion and the musician can connect to the same emotion a raga gives them so which is the other way around for the maybe not uh, so exposed audience to the hindustani music <clears throat> we can use the tune to bring them closer to the lyric and then draw them to music so that was that effort was made and uh, what can i say mara i have been absolutely privileged to learn that song and uh, sing i also request you to sing a few lines of that composition <laughs> if yes. that's okay yes uh, can we can we do that together yes ah, 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 pakshi paadiya mar pakshi paadiya mar pakshi paadiya mar pakshi paadiya odu vilya otteya pakshi paadiya mar pakshi paadiya oduvinya uttaya oru grama vidhava pol ila kondu thana moodi oru grama vidhava pol ila kondu Ah uh. 